All right, guys, it's that time of year again. Time to breed some youngsters for 2018. I got all the hens in place, uh, with the exception of one. I'll explain to you guys why. Uh, and I've had good luck out of the 16 boxes. Only one pair gave me a bit of a hard time. Um, my suspicions were maybe that there were two cocks in the in the box together, but looking at them today, they seem to be okay. Nobody got scalped. So that's a good thing, right? Um, so I'm gonna take you guys along with me. We're gonna go down the list of what I'm breeding from. And I'll be honest, with the exception of one or two birds in here, um, I literally put these birds together based on performance. So what did I do? Uh, I was able to get a hold of all my uncle's uh, performance, all his race results. And I basically chose the top performing birds. Uh, they had to either have won races or have been in the top 10% on multiple races. And that's what I chose from. Out of the 100 plus pigeons that were in this loft or in my other coop as well, uh, I went through every single one with a fine tooth comb. I chose the best based on performance, based on handling them, how, what I want, how, it, how they feel, and what I expect to get out of the youngsters, especially the, at the fact that I will be keeping the youngsters for later breeding. So let's, uh, let's not wait too, too much longer here. Let's, uh, let's dig right in into what I'm breeding. So we'll start with the top box here. Mind you guys, I'm using a new camera, so I'm gonna try to get these birds in focus. Um, that right there is a, that is Rosie actually. If you guys follow along on 10 Flights Pigeon Station on Facebook, you'll see Rosie up there. She's a top producing hen for my uncle. And I brought back Casanova. Casanova is the father to my race winner. He is a phenomenal, phenomenal pigeon. Uh, I figured those two will make a good pair. She's a producing hen. He's a good producing cockbird. So that's what I'm gonna put together. Like I said, the chances are just as great with anything, but in this case, I know I'm breeding out of two producing birds. So my chances, I believe, are a bit higher. Um, you know, 1% maybe. Moving down the list here, we got the mosaic. And his hen, these were already mated per my uncle. He told me to put these back together because they've produced multiple winners, uh, including uh, a 200 mile winner, which I have the nest mate to that or the nest yeah the nest mate the brother to that hen um, so i put these two together they're already on an egg they, they were already paired from previous so that was quick down the list here i have two birds again i didn't choose them by any color reason uh literally performance he is a multiple top 10 position bird with a 350 mile win she is a multiple uh top 10 top 10 position pigeon with a 500 mile win so i you know perfect perfect pair there um we'll see we'll see what they give us moving down the list this is the only cock bird he's one of the plums that i didn't pick a hen for and the reason why i didn't uh if you guys remember zach uh, a good friend of mine we built him that small coop uh what i want to do is i want to bring him over I want to let him pick out a hen uh, to put to that cock uh, anything he wants out of my loft or my uncle's and I'm gonna split the youngsters with him uh, he plans on racing next year but obviously he's got a small coop so with his three pairs currently uh, this will give him a few extra youngsters to try out plus I mean get him involved like anything else who doesn't want new birds who doesn't want new blood in their in their you know stock loft so I'm gonna call him up later on tonight he'll be by he'll pick out a hen and we'll go from there Hopefully he understands what the point I'm trying to make, but moving down, we have a beautiful, beautiful producing red hen. Let me see if I get her in focus. There she is. To a blue tick cockbird. There they go. Give us a show. Come on. How do you like that? They're not camera shy at all. Uh, this bird here was actually a gift from a real good buddy of mine, uh, a guy I look up to, um, a guy I respect immensely, Bob. Uh, Bob, not to get sidetracked here, but I recently went to Bob's house. Uh, he ran me through his birds. He ran me through some of his methods. 
uh, what he looks for in a bird. I mean, just trying to help me out. And he said something to me that then I didn't really, I didn't really consider um, until much later, a few days later after that, I thought about it and thought about it and I just it just dawned on me out of nowhere. And I'll tell you guys exactly what he said. And this might not be word for word, but this is what he said. He said, when I asked about breeding good birds and winning races, he basically put it in this way. He said, breed better pigeons and winning races will be a result of that. And again, at first I'm like, ah, oh, yeah, I get it. You know, breed good birds, win races. I get it. Only till a few days after that I realized what he was trying to convey on me. Uh, and now I think I understand. Breed better pigeons and winning races will be a result. I think what he was trying to convey was if I breed birds with the attributes that I want, uh, meaning good flight feathers, good <coughs> uh, bodies, good size, I mean, assuming that all things are equal in terms of pedigree, uh, you know, winning bloodlines, things of that nature, that eventually, if I focus on breeding a better bird, I will start to win races because these birds are that much better. Uh, I hope that makes sense because it makes sense to me. Uh, if I, previous year, I basically I bred so I get a youngster that'll win a race for me. I didn't really choose the birds wisely. Half the time I was putting the birds based on color, red to red, blue to blue. I didn't really look at sizes. Uh, you know, I didn't feel the birds over. I just said, hey, these are good birds. I'm gonna put them together. I went to Bob's Loft. I handled almost all his birds. And I'll tell you what, there isn't one that I would not put in my loft. They all felt great. They all felt silky smooth. They all had good bodies, good feather quality. I mean, just everything you want in a pigeon. You can tell he put a lot of time and effort in his family of pigeons. And it shows, you know, I mean, look at our classic race. He was 22 seconds to win, 22 seconds. That's a big money race. 22 seconds he's got good quality and he's bred for that so that's the the plan that's my goal for this upcoming season not only to breed out of performing birds but to really look the bird over does it have what i want do i want this is a bird too big is a bird too small you know things like that do i really want that in my loft because the youngsters from here are the ones i'll be keeping so i hope that makes sense guys because it makes sense to me breed better pigeons and winning races will be a result don't focus on, you know, this is a son of this and this is a daughter of that. Put them together based on what you like, man. Whatever criteria you follow, put that together because the offspring will only get better with time. If you got to give up a couple years to get that family of birds that you really like, well, guess what? That's the game, right? All right, getting back on track, guys. This here is a special pair, special because my wife chose them. That right there is a nice red grizzle cockbird. He is a race winner and he is also the sire to that little white hen that was in there, the 500 mile race winner. And she chose the mother to my race winner to put to him. This is her pair, her babies. She can call them what she likes. She can race them how she likes. I wanna get her involved as well, including my kids. I have two sons, a, a seven-year-old and a nine-year-old. Hopefully they'll get into it just like I did when I was their age. And we'll go from there. But yeah, this is a, 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 a pair she chose and I couldn't be happier, honestly. They're, they both have good performance. One's a producer, one's a winner and producer. Can't go wrong there, right? This here are the only birds I really chose because they're pretty. That is my almond hen. She's my only and last a youngster I have off the original almond cock was a chocolate bastine cock and I decided to put it to that weird colored I don't even know I mean he's a plum but his, his wing shield is blue his flights are white he's got a little bit of red in him I don't know if the camera's really bringing that color in but he's such an oddball color I'm just super curious what they're gonna give me uh, hopefully good performing birds but I wouldn't mind a couple pretty birds in the mix as well down the line so we don't make this video way too long these two i assumed were both cockbirds but i'm thinking now that they're nice little hen and nice little cock uh, that's a brother out of three that i'm breeding only because they've been consistent birds all three brothers out of the same original cockbird i'm not sure exactly whom so i don't want to give you guys bad information she is a 400 mile race winner correct me if i'm wrong i didn't really jot them all down i just basically put the bird's band number on paper and selected them from there. 
These two birds I have high hopes for only because he is a multiple race winner. He's a three times first. She's a multiple race winner. I don't know what they are. I haven't contacted my uncle to find out. I think they may be out of his Schmulder Jensen's only because they're blues. But I could be wrong. They could be crosses. They could be straights. Hopefully they're not nest mates. Uh, the band series are way different. Plus I think they're different years as well. But I got high hopes for them only because of the amount of race winner be race winnings between the two. Down here, I got another blue. It's a nice little check hen. Both race winners. I don't know the lines. Uh, I assume they're both crosses. Man, I tell you what, I'm loving this camera. Hopefully the video quality comes out or the picture image quality comes out as I'm seeing it because it's just, it, it's unbelievable. But a nice, beautiful pair there. Move down the list here. We got another. I mean, there's really, basically I'm just showing you guys pigeons because there's really nothing wrong with these birds. I mean, physically they're perfect. On paper, they're perfect. Uh, race winners, consistent birds. I mean, I wish they were mine, but in the same token, I don't have a personal relationship with these birds. And I don't mean to make it corny, but honestly, man, when you know your birds, you just know your birds. You name them, you have a, a relationship, so to speak, with them, you know? Another pair here. This is one of the brothers out of the three that I'm breeding. Nice little red hen, nice little red hen. Jeez, that's obviously a blue hen. Down the list. This here was a love mating. This is one of my cockbirds from, la from last year. Uh -huh. I thought that Splash was a cockbird, ended up being a hen. And I found him in a bowl one day, so I said, you know what, I'm gonna leave it be. Nothing wrong with the love mating here and there. I know she's a race winner. You can see the race band on her leg. He is not, but he's a good producing bird. So we'll see how they go. I'm hoping to breed at least two rounds of youngsters out of all these birds and then select hard. Uh, they don't have to win races as long as they're, man, I really gotta fix that. As long as they're consistent birds and they're, sh and they're showing and handling how I want them to handle. Another nice pair. Again, guys, I didn't choose these birds for any other reason other than performance. I didn't even know the colors, to be 100% honest. I basically jotted down band numbers and I put band number to band number. And this is, hopefully they're not nest mates because they look pretty darn close, but that's what it ended up being. Moving over, only a couple more. I got a nice big blue male. He himself is an equals first. Uh, zero one seconds behind the first bird, so basically an equals first to a 300 mile winner hen. That's 59,630. Beautiful cock bird. I don't know what he is. He's got a big gnarly head on him. A friend of mine calls him Gnarls Barkley, so I figured that's what it's gonna be. We joke a lot about birds, especially when I describe a bird with a big waddle. I call him gnarly. Look at that gnarly headed bird, and he's like, Oh, that's Gnarls Barkley. So that's what he'll be, Gnarls Barkley. And finally, but not least, obviously, is 38.95 in his hen. You're on one egg. I pray to God that the egg is good. He is the grandfather to my race winners on both sides, uh, on the dark and on the red grizzle. And I'm hoping to get at least one or two more youngsters for stock out of that cockbird there. So that's what we got, guys. Obviously up here I have my two race winners and that hen there and yes i have decided i think i'm gonna call him the dutch raven and maybe even call him the dutch for short or raven for short but on paper he's gonna be the dutch raven and that's a shout out to a good buddy of mine on youtube uh dutch pigeons he called him out from day one that he was a nice bird and hopefully he did well and you see what he did so that's awesome that's on you dutch pigeons we're gonna call him the dutch raven but that's all i got for you guys Hang in, hang in there with me. We'll go down the list. We'll see how the babies come out. Cross your fingers with me that we get uh, we get a good batch here. And we'll go from there, guys. Again, I'm using a new camera, so hopefully the image quality is as good as I'm seeing it here. And I'll see you on the next one, guys.